Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Gustav. Thanks for the opportunity. And um, it's good uh, I was not taking the class after the lunch because after the lunch is a very difficult task. Good, but I have escaped in that. Okay, this topic is more on uh, digitalization of materials. There is a lot of buzz going on when you, whenever you see any papers or any sort of articles in universities or anything, they are calling about digitalization and additive manufacturing. But we will go through a little uh, in deep. Yeah. So today what I will cover now is um, introduction uh, of DNVGL, what is additive manufacturing, uh, market outlook, how DNVGL is prepared for certification and inspection and testing, that is the main topic. So uh, I am representing DNVGL. Okay. DNVGL is a global assurance and risk management company. Uh, hopefully most of people know. Uh, we are certifying body and we endorse uh, the welding procedure specifications as well as PQR, we witness and we certify. So we are the certifying authority for welding. Okay. And uh, we are classification society also. So we develop a rules and standards to be used on board the ships and offshore rigs. Not only that, and we are in part of oil and gas, as well as we are in uh, uh, digitalization, which is called um, more on this veracity groups, yeah, software development. And uh, as you see, this is uh, we are having our almost 12,160 vessels are certified by DNVGL, and including 345 offshore rigs, which is semi subs jackups and things all so we are the certifying body okay. and our commitment is we always have the 5% revenue for the research and development okay and dnvgl uh, it's 154 years company old it's not uh, a short company it's 154 years and there is a lot of uh, research and developments are gone and so far it's crossed 154 years and DNV was before was it's called Dutch Nordic Veritas. In 2014, it was had a share of uh, German Shell Lloyds of Germany, but now it is the whole stack is bought by Dutch Nordic Veritas. So it's DNV GL they call it. Okay. And going moving into the uh, additive manufacturing, uh, the term it's always uh, tricky. They call it as 3D printing. Anything can be printed now. Um, that's what the printer company says. And there is a formal uh, definition given by ASTM standard. AM is process of joining materials to make pro objects from three dimension model data, usually layer by layer as subtractive manufacturing methodologies. Okay. I have a video here uh, just to show how what of our uh, friend from Hammer has shown this video, what but is yeah. Additive manufacturing. additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, is a process that creates a physical object from a digital design. The engineer designs the object using computer aided design or CAD software. The 3D design file is then sliced into thin layers and uploaded to an additive manufacturing machine. The manufacturing process begins once an extremely thin. This is something which is going on. The, for maritime, what we are looking in is uh, this will come up more in uh, offshore and maritime, basically on the repair side. Because if you see, for example, when you want to have a, 
if a ship is moving from sailing from here from this part towards Hamburg or here, if it is having some parts broken, then it, it has to wait for the spare parts to come. So maybe the spare parts may be from here Iceland or somewhere, then it has to travel all the way. So this new generation of uh, 3D printing, uh, how it works is from here you can transfer the files, the same file by digital transformation and when you have vessel is coming towards somewhere here, then you can print. So you can print the product and you can send it to the onboard. So the time uh, travel from here to here and as well as the production method is saved. That is the whole concept. Okay? Uh, this is some of the Wallace report as given. Uh, in 2016, they have identified where are these 3D printing will be doing it. It is in industrial business, consumer products, medical, academic and motor vehicle. Okay. But here in uh, 20, yeah. there is no much <coughs> difference here, if you see here to here, the industrial machines. And consumable and medical, this is 2018. Uh, and it is more towards the aerospace industry is developing. Most of the thing is goes into aerospace. But when it comes to <coughs> maritime and offshore, the picking up is very small, less. The percentage is like 3 to 4 percent. So, um, something goes wrong in that. Just a minute. Yeah. What may go wrong in this process is you may have some lack of fusion, porosity, cracks, inclusions, residual stresses. This is the normal process where in welding you will find out. It is the same as what you have before, the so welding process will have some defects. And here they have this sort of uh, metal uh, additive manufacturing, we are talking about only on metal additive manufacturing, not on plastics or polymers. There is a lot of other techniques is there, but when we focus only on metal additive manufacturing, it is mainly laser and electron beam. But what we identify is that we will be having more on VAM techniques, which is wire arc additive manufacturing, where uh, Hammer was showing about these industry 4.0, that is one part that is most on the VAM, VAM technique, which is wire based, not powder based, it is wire based. And you can see um, a lot of um, lack of fusions is there in the, uh, when you have a powder metalling, you will have a lot of lack of fusions as well as some small cracks will happen. So how to avoid this, that is the challenge. For, for classification, DNVGL class, we are involved from starting to end. That means we will certify a feedstock, which is the powder, which has to be type approved. And we have a design, we will verify the design. We will monitor the printing company also, the printer, and we qualify the printers. When it is installed on board, we will be looking into the commissioning and testing as well as on the field. When it is sailing, we will be looking in. So it is a long process it is happening in. But the main thing is whether we have a confidence of this technology in maritime and offshore. As you all know in maritime and ships, when ship is sailing in the sea, if something breaks, it cannot be replaced immediately because it is in the water. It is not like an industry in uh, land where you can immediately stop the field and you can repair it. But whereas when a ship is sailing, it is very difficult to stop the ships or the offshore rigs to stop the rigging itself. So it is mo like more conservative. So presently the uh, market is driven by printer companies. They are giving more advertisement that they can print everything in all shapes. Uh, but 
what we identified is 350 failure modes, what may go wrong. So, we have done an internal study and we have identified like 350 failure modes and all the 350 modes if it is um, mitigated then we can give the approval. Uh, this is what the printer company says that you will have a different type everything you can give, but it is not. Okay. In for DNVGL, oh, we have started this process almost uh, 4 5 years before. We released a guideline on additive manufacturing which is 0197. I have a copy of that I, I can share with the website. It is a guideline and as well as in uh, we participated in JIP program and we developed in some rule development and we have released approval of manufacture this month and also we are going to release a type approval program for feedstock and as well as a class program on robotic welding also because robotic welding is picking up in maritime and oil gas industry and as well as uh, mostly in the manufacturing sector. So, we will focus more on robotic welding also. Uh, in plan for 1920, we are having some lot of uh, participations in technical committee as well as uh, we will be having some workshops approval. If you see we have uh, internally we have done almost from started from 2014, we done our internal research to get the confidence of this additive manufacturing whether it can be certified or not. And after that, we started to do some guideline in 2017 and we have released one approval program in 2018 which is July, which is very fresh actually. So, how the process works for DVGL certification is, we will certify the first feedstock review and then pre-processing modeling review and then we will do a manufacturing qualification and data transfer. Nowadays data transfer is a very important because it can be hi, uh, hacked by any of the process. So, the data transfer has to be in a very clear way and it has to be in secure mode. So, DNVGL has its own uh, software base uh, like cloud base, it is called Veracity where anyone can download, uh, upload their design, it will be stored and whenever it is needed they can use it it can be used for only one time. So, if you want to print, you, you can download from the uh, website and it will print and then it will uh, discard itself. So, again one more time you cannot print. So, that sort of software uh, DNVGL has created. Yeah. So, definitely yes exactly. So, we will print and post processing uh, and testing and inspection is the main component and also as the certification. This follows the request like technology assessment we do and manufacturing procedure qualification and approval of manufacturer and then we will certify the component. It is same like our doing a uh, PQR, when you are doing a welding, first we do a WPQR and then we write a WPS, but we want to keep it as a same as welding method. Some uh, companies they say uh, additive manufacturing is not part of uh, welding but we strongly believe that this is background, they should have a welding background and metallurgical background. If they do not have welding and metallurgical background, then the printer company will not succeed. So, they need to have some sort of welding knowledge and metallurgical knowledge. <coughs> some settings is wrong in here, but let us see, yeah, something is wrong here. Okay, now mind. <coughs> okay, you know, I will share with you what is this. There is a table actually, it is not coming in, but this table what it says is 
If it's a low, it's a risk matrix we have. If it's a low risk for conventional uh, rolling, casting, forgings, <coughs> we do not require any certificate. We just re require a test report. But for additive manufacturing, it is not the case. We need to have some sort of proof of concept and it has to be tested. So when it comes for additive manufacturing, we need to have uh, type approval as well as approval of manufacture. And when it goes to a component, it has to be having a full product certificate. Okay. And Dean Vigil is involved in a lot of projects now. Uh, presently, we have completed a project with uh, Green Ship Denmark project. And we had a collaboration with uh, PJ Diesel and Force Technology was there. Um, and as well as the uh, KBB, they are the manufacturer of uh, the turbocharger. The part here is uh, the lot of additive manufacturing. You can scan your product. If it's a valve or anything, you can just take photos or scan and you can print. But that is uh, disruptive technology. So in this case, because if you scan a product, we do not know what is the design parameters. So anyone can copy easily. So they, it comes the IP issues, intellectual property issues. So if you have a bought a valve which is made in a very uh, uh, tested and proven design, people go and take a photo and scan it, and the scanned thing can go into the printer and they can print. But they will not have the knowledge what is it, what is the material selection, what is the temperature it can withstand and everything. So we are against of that and what we said in our class rule is as long as the designer is involved, we will accept re-engineering, reversal process. If the designer is not in that picture, then we will not accept the product itself. And Huseman, um, Huseman Netherlands, we have a additive manufacturing hook which we are doing now. It is in a RAM lab, Rotterdam. It's VAM technique and we are, it's a hook which is, um, it's 4.5 meter diameter length and I will have that sketch. Yeah. And we have a Sing lab. Uh, it's a Chinese government and German government has uh, together done uh, this project for laser printer manufacturing certifications. Yeah. And also we have this Hyundai industry. They were going to develop a propeller blade which is crop, uh, copper nickel bronze CU3 material. As well as Australia, we have some printing on board ships projects. As well as we have a global additive manufacturing center in Singapore. And we have a, one a major joint industry project, which is Equinar, which is the Statoil is involved and BP. And we have the contractor SLM Solutions, Technip, Rolls-Royce. And fabricator are this company, Asset Metal, Additive industry from Netherlands, Hiptech, Ivaldi Group, and Unstri Translate. So it's a major project we are doing it in uh, Norway. As we all know, that we, the uh, in Norway they have this catapult. The government has sponsored around 84, 84 million NOC to have a additive manufacturing uh, printer machine to develop the technology and things. Yeah, and it will be installed in our DNVGL lab, which is in the Bergen. Yeah, coming back to the uh, additive manufacturing. See, th the product actually, if you see, this is the normal product which is casting or forging normally we have it. Normally it's a casting. But when they do this optimization with additive manufacturing, they can reduce this uh, weight of the component and they make the final design as this. The original design of the casting is looks like that, but the optimized design will be looking at this stage. So what happens is they are reducing the weight by 50%, that is okay. But how we are going to test this one in service? Because if you have this block, it's easy to test, ultrasonic, MPI, or whatever, it's easy to do, right, after one year. But if you have this component, it's very difficult. You will not have any sort of entity to do. If there is a fatigue crack or anything, how you are going to find out? That's the concern. That's what we are raising to the designers now. 
we will not accept so sort of things unless they say that they will have some sort of flat surface somewhere to keep the probes to identify by ultrasonic testing or by MPI, whereas the fatigue area or whereas the high critical areas. So, this is some sort of uh, original manifold is aluminum silicon 10 mg, it was volume 96, mass is 25, but when you have a iteration of two different 316, it is only 16 kg and here if you see the here it is around 12. So, the weight is lost, but when it comes to inspection, you are not able to do anything, at least here you will be able to do some inspection you can do like or even CT scan also you can do from this, when it comes here it is difficult. So, to meet this design criteria, one is the main thing is the design criteria. So, if you for example, this is a propeller blade which is in the ships and thing. This propeller blade has a tendency that it has to move a little bit on the top when there is a force coming in, water, or hammer force or the revolution, it has to move. But with this additive manufacturing with VAM or LAM, whether it is possible to do, so that has to be tested. So, what we said is you can produce a product, you can optimize the product, everything is okay, but it has to have a function testing. So, if it has to go for vigorous function testing, then we will accept it. Yeah, the same here. Something is wrong actually. Some setting is wrong or something is wrong in this. Everything is going in haywire. It's something. Everything is up and down. Okay, where's the correct slide? Huh? Where, where were you? Yeah, you can yeah. go down. Yeah, go. Yeah, this one. This one here. Mm. Okay. Supposed to be upside down. This is supposed to be here. Everything. It's all yeah. upside down. Do it again. You can install it. Oh. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Uh, is this okay? Good? Yeah, this is okay. At least I can. Right. Something. Yeah. Thanks. If you see this, um, what we have done for procedure qualification is, we ask them to print in different blocks. We ask them to print in vertical direction, horizontal direction and test in this direction tensile, bend and choppy and as well as both the directions because we want to see both x, y, z direction, how is the behavior of the material. So, once if it is tested, then at least we can use it in some sort of as a proof. Yeah. This is the feedstock. This is the powder uh, for additive manufacturing. It has to be having in some sort of uh, shape. If you have a different uh, shapes, this all will give us a lot of impurities. So, to define the uh, feedstock, we need to have some very spherical shape, then it will be useful. So, this um, feedstock, you cannot use it again. Some, but some feedstock company, uh, they are saying that you can re recycle this feed uh, powders, but we are not sure whether this automation, it will have some uh, ionization between the particles itself. So, we are trying to say that if you do a recycling of powders, you may have tend to have this type of the, the, the powder itself will be melt together and it will be having a sticky. So, you will not have a good weldment. Okay. Uh, if you see the Inconel 625 material, if you see here, this is the VAM technique. We had the welding here, but we had a lot of porosities here. So, this is one bead and this is one bead, but we had a lot of porosities and lack of fusion was there. 
you can see here this is the bead for uh, Cu3, this is the copper aluminum bronze uh, for propellers. Now, if you see here we have some voids here, oxides layer are here and we have some cracks line here, but we want to understand what is this oxide layer inside. If it is only oxygen that is okay, but if it is a hydrogen ions or if it is a hydrogen atom then it is more serious. So that we have explained them that they need to come up with some sort of uh, study to say that this they have to remove by heat treatment process like heat process or heat treatment. Yeah. We have done some uh, project which is this is the Inconol 713 material for turbocharger and this is Inconol 625. When you merge together with the weld here, we find lot of liquidation cracking. The reason for the liquidation cracking, one of the reason might be this blade might have gone through a fatigue cycle. If you are welding on top of a fatigue structure, then you might tend to have a lot of crack line. Okay. So what DNVGL has done is we have uh, released a uh, class program. which will identify this quality control process, how to test it, what are the things we need to do, the process in process control and as well as guidance for process verification, process monitoring and production control. This is one of the uh, uh, voids we had and we are doing a additive manufacturing course we have developed with Stanford and uh, NTNU in Norway. We have started to deliver this course. We have done a couple of uh, pilot projects and we will be doing uh, courses on additive manufacturing, but this more towards the industrial thing. This is the VAM uh, process which we are going to do it in a RAM lab. Uh, we are part of a, a class there. Here if you see there is a hollow section here. Normally the hooks will be done in a casting. But here they are going to have it in by VAM technique. So this VAM they are going to have a hollow section inside, but it, when it comes for testing, this is very difficult. How you are going to test inside this layer? You know in welding we always say the weakest portion is start and stop point. So normally we need to test the start and stop point, but in case of like this curvature, there is lot of start and stop points because the robot they are having a path which is going around, it will stop somewhere and again it will re because the nozzle has to turn to get this shape. To get this shape, the computer, the robotic has to be teached in such a way it has to move around. So for class what we said to them is they need to produce some same design and they have to test it by proof testing that means they have to discard, one they have to print and test it on mechanical all the tensile yield uh, as well as the uh, choppy and bend test which also includes like density, fatigue, macro, metallographic examination, corrosion testing, weldability and non-district testing, so do in full part. As you see this is one of the project we done, we find a lot of pores here as well as we had some surface cracks in bonding area and liquidation cracking. So it is not simple that we see that uh, if you have additive manufacturing you can produce a product, but we need to do a lot of study in that. So when you are qualifying itself it has to have a very clear records. If you do not have a, uh, the records and the computer is not taking up the information of the what is the how many data and how many layers, it will be difficult. So we need to monitor the each layer wise. So for this case it was said that they will have a 3000 slicing layers. So each layer has to be monitored by the software. So if there is a surge in the electric current, if the amps or voltage is having some fluctuation that is also going to create some defects. 
So all has to be in perfect. Uh, as uh, in industry four, you are showing all the parameters. That is one of the main thing. But what we feel is this technology will come up, and it will be booming in RAM technique. Powder bed will be uh, more towards aerospace, but for maritime and offshore, RAM will be the best method. Uh, yeah, that completes my presentation. Uh, my fast or you have some time? Uh, just a minute, I will show some. Uh, this is something I have. Uh, this is my background, uh, which I think the slide has gone faster. This is my background actually. Um, so I had this IW, IWE, uh, as well as I done my masters in uh, NT Singapore, as well as the in Berkeley. Okay. We have this. Uh, you can download our uh, programs here um, if you click here um, all the rules and standards are here and if you take additive manufacturing you will find here so this is the standard we have and it's free and you can uh, download uh, all the standards and as well as the rules requirement so it's given here how we do the documentation what we require and what are the approval testing and as well quality control. We explained very clearly what is step by step what we have to do. Okay. Yes, I think that completes my presentation. I am sorry there is something slide has happened that it was reversing. Yeah. Yes, uh, any questions so far? Yeah. Can you print out of any material 304 and 300? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, presently, the research is uh, more on titanium and 304, 316 and carbon steel and as well as inconol 625 and 713. But all this material, when it comes to fatigue and corrosion, there is no uh, evidence that it can withstand. So for DNV, what we have said is any product, it can be printed, but you have to put it in the ship and it has to go for at least six months because it has to withstand the fitness for purpose. That means it has to have the revolution as well as the fatigue and torsion and the temperature has to withstand. So we need to have some sort of uh, experience when using this material on board. Because at present there is no uh, proof that this material is being installed on, on board and it is withstand for, another, uh, for six months or one year. We do not have the proof now. It is only on the lab and academic has done. But installation on board, it's not been done. So we are working with some companies like Maersk and uh, Williamson to put some products on board and test it on the field, how it behaves, the material of EAM, how it behaves, whether it is having some fatigue cracks developing or it is not developing. So that's research is going on now. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, process. We verify and we certify the process. You certify right. a process of a specific manufacturer. manufacturer. Yeah. And then in class, what we say is any material goes on board a ship or rig, it has to be certified by DNVGL. So that's the minimum that's requirement. This is the your request. So any, any, if it is a DNV vessel, it is classed by DNV vessel. If it is a valve or uh, um, propeller or any radar or anything, if it goes on board, it has to be certified by DMEGL. Then only it can be installed on board. But you know, certifying the process doesn't necessarily mean that we, do, we don't do any destructive testing of the material that is printed. No, we will require. Uh, the, uh, so we'll require. This to be done. It has to be before done. This before. That means we qualify the process, like for printer, they want to uh, print a flange, for instance. Okay. So we will ask them to print one flange in the printer. And we will destroy uh, destructive testing to prove that it can withstand the pressure, temperature, as well as the okay. uh, tensile and all the mechanical results has to be there, including it has to be fixed on board to function also. So they'll do a function test. That's mean. 
So you cannot base on the installation qualifications <coughs> of staffers who will deduct a, a fund of, let's say, 5% more diameter or whatever? No, no. Yeah, before, uh, that's what we had accepted before because there was some standards. So they are manufacturing some sta based on some standards. But for AM, there is no international standards. They are developing now. So we don't know what is the uh, thing application. So that's the reason we're asking for entire qualification. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much.